Hello, today we're going to be going over our Novo uh, 16.1. Uh, we're going to be basically starting right up front here with our tongue jack. Our first little switch here is going to be so you can turn your light on, so if you had to hook up at night. And our other one is so that we're able to raise and lower the camper. This is how we get on and off the tow vehicle, but this is also how we level the camper from front to back. I do always like to recommend while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle, make sure you're level from side to side first. They have little levels you can buy. You can stick on the camper or you can just stick a, a little level inside the doorway. But you want to make sure you're level from side to side first. Um, use a little Glock so you can roll onto them. Once you're good from the side to side, then you unhook from the truck, pull forward and then level front to back using this guy. And then you're going to lower all four of your stabilizer jacks located on each corner of the camper. That is a three quarter socket. They do provide a manual crank for you. Uh, I just tell you to socket because it makes it a lot easier to use it on a drill. So then next behind that, oh, you also do have a manual crank as well. And that tool is provided also. Then we have our 20 pound propane tank. This guy has been filled minus what was used to test the propane system with. We have our cover here. It does come with a bungee cord to secure it underneath. But it also has this little wing nut piece here. You feed this guy right through this hole here on the back side of this guy. And then you can put that on for extra security to make sure it wouldn't potentially blow off as you go down the road. Then behind there is going to be our batteries, 24 series deep cycle marine RV style battery. And then right over here on the corner, this guy here is going to be your battery disconnect. Basically, you're going to mess with this guy when you're storing the camper. And basically all you would do is just turn it to the off position so nothing in the camper would potentially be draining the battery on you. <clears throat> Whenever you are hooked to sure power, towing it, anything along those lines, you do want that on. This other guy right here is just a monitor for the tire monitoring system. That's what that little sticker there is. It's just a notice sticker to let you know that there is a tire monitoring system on the unit. And I'll show you that guy here in a little bit. Uh, we got our pass-through storage compartment. You see some nice little goodies on the other side. We'll talk about that once we get on over there. Uh, then we're gonna have our gray key here is gonna be for our compartment doors. If I get it in there right. There we go. And then basically you just turn the lock. All right, so next we're gonna have the water heater. With this guy, this is a gas and electric option model. Right here is gonna be a pressure relief valve. Whenever you go to empty the water tank, you wanna make sure that you relieve the pressure off of it. Then to re remove the water, you're gonna remove this guy right here. This is your anode rod. This guy starts out the size of a dime and works itself down to the size of a coat hanger. What it's basically doing is attracting the impurities in the water so it attacks that rod and not your tank because it is a steel tank. But basically this is gonna be a one and one sixteenth socket to remove it. You got a switch down here for the electric side. Right now it's in the on position. We're gonna go ahead and flip that guy off. Right below that is gonna be where you're gonna have your drain for the galley. So basically your kitchen sink and shower. And that's open, so we're gonna go ahead and push that to close. And then right behind that's where your low point drains are located. You got red for hot, and then uh, looks like white for cold. Basically you open those guys up, open up a faucet. A lot of times that's used when you go to winterize the coach. Uh, I always like to say when you're done camping, since you do wanna to try to get all the water out of the camper, you know, you're going to remove that anode rod, open up those guys there, and then open up usually your kitchen faucet. And as you go home, that air is going to blow through the lines and push any excess water out so you wouldn't have any water left in the lines. It could become potentially, potentially stagnant or rot, smelling like rotten eggs. <clears throat> Next, we're going to have our city water connection. Basically, with this guy, you do want to make sure you have a pressure regulator at the water spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter and then your blue and white water drinking hose. You'll hook up to here. You'll be ready to use the cold side right away. You do have to wait for the water heater to fill up before you start getting water on the hot side. And then of course you got to turn it on to get that water hot. Right next to that is going to be your cable hookup for campground cable. You do have a 30 amp power cord. This notice sticker here is going to be for your tires to make sure that you do check the Lug nuts uh, periodically, that is recommended at 50, 100, and 200 miles. Uh, you do want to make sure that they are torqued to 100 foot pounds. All right, I always like to say when you leave the campground, usually the first place we're stopping is the gas station to refuel. 
while you're refueling, you can check these lug nuts. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. Then you also do want to make sure that you keep them topped off with their max PSI level. Oh, uh, let's see. I believe these guys are going to be 80 PSI. And the nice thing is you have that monitoring system so you can be able to see what the tire pressure is on those guys. <clears throat> All right, then back here in the back is going to be where you would dump these, uh, basically just the toilet. And that's you know, your wastewater. Push that guy in to close it. As you see, it's a black handle, so it tells you it's a black tank. The other one had the gray handle on it. We will make our way back to the doorway here just momentarily. We're gonna go ahead and come around to the other side. Uh, as you see, your caps here actually can come off. You can store your sewer hose inside there. This guy here is gonna be one of two sprayer ho uh, hookups. Um, we were both kind of curious, both of us techs were kind of curious about why there was two of them here, but they have a really long uh, hookup hose that goes onto this. So we like to say that it's so that you could be able to wash your camper if you wanted to, because it's pretty long. You'd be able to stretch to each side from both hookups. Your other one's located on the other side there. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Down below there is going to be your black tank flush. This guy's basically a sprayer inside the black tank, sprays around and gets that nastiness out of there. When you hook up to your sewer and dump, you're gonna pull that handle to start dumping, and then you're gonna hook up your hose to here. Once again, you do wanna have a pressure regulator at the water spigot because on the back side of this is a plastic check valve. Too strong a water pressure can damage that check valve. But then you're gonna, I like to say, go out and get you a black hose. Keeps it simple, black tank, black hose. And then hook up to here, turn it on, and then just let it start cleaning. That water will start coming out clear when you, uh, from your elbow piece that you'll be able to see through. You'll shut the water off, unhook it from the spigot, and then unhook it from here. And then close your valve. And then you would hook up to your gray to dump the gray. That kind of helps clean the sewer hose out for you. Out here they do provide a 110 hookup that is GFCI protected since it's on the outside. Uh, they do also provide where you can do a quick plug and play solar panel, but basically it's just like a little fold out one that would sit on the ground. You do have your vent for the stove up there that does have to be, all, uh, this little flap does have to be open uh, whenever you are cooking. Uh, but then other than that, you would close it. Basically, you would climb up here on this guy and then you just kind of, I usually put my finger in the middle, kind of flex a little bit to help feed it into the grooves. And then usually it'll just slide and lock right into place. All right, so next we're gonna have this little rail up here on top, basically so you can have your little outside barbecue station. Uh, they give you a little table here provided so you can kind of store you know, put some of your drinks up here. You don't want to try to put a whole bunch of heavy weight. You know, we're not trying to put 40 pounds of wheat, um, meat on here to start growing. Because um, this guy's pretty got some weight to it itself. Uh, with the grill, basically, you're going to have your connection here on the back side. It's a quick connect style. So basically, it will connect here. And it connects here. And then there's a valve right here that you would churn. That, uh, to allow the propane to come through, through the line to use your grill. They do also recommend that you want to make sure your awning is in when you are cooking. And there is a little warning sticker right here about using the outdoor cooking area. <clears throat> so back behind that is going to be where your furnace is, the intake and outtake. As you see, it does kind of block this a little bit. Uh, we do recommend mud dauber screens to put over these to help keep mud daubers and the wasp out of there from building nests and creating further issues. Uh, nice thing is that that kit does come with a tool to where you can take that on and off. So you'd be able to take that bottom one off so you're able to use your grill properly like you should. Uh, it does also have the drip tray there. Uh, for this guy, when you go to spark, basically you just turn and it'll light. Usually you can take this off. You can see once it's lit and then set the griddle on top. I do recommend that you do try to season the griddle first. Uh, Basically, I always like to recommend just go on YouTube and look up how to season a Blackstone. It's going to be the same general concept, basically. You're just seasoning the griddle. And most of this will all, basically, this would all get stored inside our compartments here. Inside our compartment, though, we have our manual crank for the tongue jack. Our cranks for the stabilizers. Our super long hose. And then they also do provide the hoses for the vacuum that is inside the coach. And then these guys here are basically feet 
for the bottom of these guys. So right now they just have the screws in. You can actually remove these screws, put these feet on, and then if you wanted to, you didn't have to put it on here. You can actually set it on a table if you want in the grill. So now we're going to come back towards our entry door area. So pretty much your door, our gray key is going to be for the compartment doors. The purple key is going to be for your entry door. Basically, with this guy, you turn this key to the left, it locks the door handle. For the deadbolt, you turn the key to the left to lock the deadbolt. You are also unable to pull the key out. You have to bring it straight back up and down to pull the key out. A lot of times though, if you go to the right, you're able to pull that key out. It shows you that you did not lock your deadbolt. You always do want to make sure this door is fully open whenever you go to bring our steps in or out. And one thing you do have to note with these steps is that you do always want this flat with the threshold uh, as possible. That's why you got the adjustments on the feet here. Go ahead and bring this guy up. This guy basically will lock into place. When the door is closed, it keeps it secured so it isn't bouncing all over the place. The reason why you want this door all the way open is so that this doesn't catch the screen door and cause damage over time. And then right here is where you can adjust your feet just by pushing this guy. Usually, I see a lot of customers will usually have it basically all the way in and then they'll drop it and then set, then pull it out to set it because all you gotta do is pull it out just to set them. It's real nice and easy. You got your handle there as well. Nice and simple. All right, so now we're gonna step inside. We're gonna attempt to anyways. Uh, before we do though, basically I'll just kind of, it's easier to show you from right here. Basically you got your control, little control panel here. Basically this is how you're gonna bring your awning in and out. I'm like trying to make sure I got enough room there. We'll get the camera lady there to watch us to make sure we don't hit nothing. You always do wanna be observant of what's going on to make sure you don't accidentally hit a tree or anything along those lines. Where's our flat? All right, that's about. So on the end, there's a flap that would come straight down. You always want that vertical with the uh, ground. But then from there, you're able to actually adjust the pitch on these guys by pulling this down, and you can create a pitch. And you see it kind of will have that angle on it. And then these guys will go back up in this lock position. You do that to either side. It is always recommended that if you're leaving the camper that you should bring your awning in. Uh, you just never know when strong gusts of winds can come or a pop-up storm. Uh, but strong enough winds can cause damage to the awning and the camper if you are not careful. All right. Then next you're gonna have your awning LED lights. So that's gonna be for your LED up there. Then you got your porch light. This porch light here has two different settings. You got one where it's gonna provide a white light for you. And that's also one right over here on the side also. And then if you flip it down, it'll provide you an orange light. Nice thing about the orange light is it gives you enough light to where you can see when you get here, but it's not gonna be attracting those bugs like the white light could. And then you have to make sure you set that in the middle to make sure it's in the off position. And then we got our interior lights. They do give you a, a GFCI outlet here, USB charging port hook up there. Got storage in this area here. And then that guy down there at the bottom is gonna be for the vacuum cleaner. Basically you can sweep all your stuff right here and then just lift it up and suck it all in. Inside this guy is where a bag is located. But if you're trying to use the hose attachments, those guys hook up right here. And then you can just turn this on manually. <clears throat> so then up here, oh, we got our fire extinguisher right here at the entry door. We have our second set of keys. Up here in our little compartment area, we're gonna have our little packet here. It's basically a lot of the manuals uh, for the appliances in the coach. Uh, there is actually a sticker on the outside. Oh, they also got this one right here where you can actually kind of download an app, put in the camper information, 
and then it will basically download a PDF file for you uh, for your camper. Uh, you also do have a Bluetooth speaker. This is going to be our remote for the TV over hiding in the corner. And then this here is going to be our tire and your monitoring system. Um, we'll get this guy all set up for you guys. And uh, basically, it'll just monitor the tires for you. Uh, it also monitors the uh, temperature of the tires as well. Uh, they're pretty neat. So, uh, then we're going to have our stove here. Basically, with this stove, you will have to have a barbecue lighter to light it. But basically, you would just turn it to the light and then use your barbecue lighter to light. And we want to make sure we use our hood range when we're cooking. That's our fan. Set those guys down. Down below is going to be where we have our microwave slash convection oven. And this guy does do a, quite a few different features. Uh, basically, you're just going to choose what you want it to do. Set, uh, basically, for the convection part, they, the numbers here got different temperatures. Uh, and then if you're trying to microwave, usually you can just push the buttons and uh, hit start and it'll automatically microwave. All right, so then we got the fridge here. So with our fridge, our controls are gonna be located up at the top. You got your power button to turn it on and off. You do have to press and usually hold this guy for about five seconds to actually shut it off. And press to hold. Uh, this is a 12 volt style fridge. Uh, but basically, we can change the temperature roughly of you know what we want it to do. So right now it's set on the fridge section. So we can either turn it higher or lower. I usually say when we first turn it on, we like to have it on four or five to get it good and cold. And then three usually helps maintain. And then if you wanted to change the temperature of the freezer, and then once again, you can just push those buttons to change that temperature. And then you have a nighttime mode. So with nighttime mode, usually it ain't as hot. So it isn't pulling as much power uh, when, it, when it's doing, doing so. Inside here, our other tech did leave us thermometer in here. Kind of show you if you can see it. It's it's reading about close to let's flip her around about two degrees. So she's nice and cold. And the same with the fridge. Got extra shelving and stuff like that. Like this middle one here actually would fold out. Uh, so if you needed extra shelves, but that's brought in so you can put your milks or sodas in there, things along that nature. <clears throat> so down below here is going to be where your furnace is located. Uh, pretty much that's where your uh, your heat's going to come out of there. Uh, when you look through those fins, there's actually a little glass window. You can actually see the flame icon lit. All right. Uh, and down here is going to be where our fuse control panel box is located. Basically everything that runs on 110, so you got to be plugged into sure power, is on the breakers. Everything that runs off the battery is going to be on your fuses. And they do have everything right here on this sticker labeled for you for which, which breaker is which. And it tells you what it operates. And then we have our carbon monoxide and uh, LP detector. It is recommended you test this guy every 9 to 14 days. Basically all you do is push this button right here. And it will start performing its test. And then it should have another beep. So it's just that simple to perform that test. You do want to make sure that this guy is always properly working. Nice thing here is it actually shows on the front to replace by August of 2027. I can tell you I have seen these guys say they like to last anywhere between 7 to 10 years. I have seen them going out before that, okay? But you do always want to be mindful. If that guy is going off, it's potentially sensing potentially propane in a camper or carbon monoxide. Uh, but you do want to take those emergency precautions by trying to get out of the coach, turn off the canister. <clears throat> Second person getting out is trying to open a window. We're not trying to open any vent fans or turn, we're not trying to create an electrical spark. But then we're going to get 50 feet away for 15 minutes and then come back into the coach. Sometimes, a lot of the times, usually, I, depending on the model of the stove, it usually would be a stove because the knob can get churned. Uh, they say that could be the same potential issue here. It can kind of vary a little bit. Um, but just always be mindful of that of that now there are other things that can cause that to go on off like cleaning supplies um, animal gases and what was the other thing um, there's one other thing I'm missing 
uh, but it's one of those missile. You know, I've had spray sunscreen set it off. The sunscreen that you spray. Oh, okay. Because it settles Sp on the floor. Spray on sunscreen. Okay. Well, there's knowledge for thought right there. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So this is where we're going to try to squeeze it in here. All right. So basically, I'm going to steal the camera here for All a right. minute. There you are, sir. So when we come in here, you're going to have the one window here. And then on the other side is going to be your fire exit window. Basically with this guy, this guy will just flip open. This is on a hinge, so the whole thing would fling open so you can get out if you could not make your way to the door. Up top, that up there is going to be where your TV antenna booster is. So if you're trying to get that campground cable where I showed you that connection on the outside, you do have to turn that booster off. Try to get in there a little bit so you can see it. There is a button right next to it. As you see that green light is lit up. Go ahead and push that button to show you so you turn it off you hit that button right there turns it back on and then from there you're able to do a you know when you get to a new area you do got to do a channel search so we'll try to show you guys that real quickly once this comes on so while that is coming on oh all right there it is all right so we're going to scan for new channels you're going to basically push the menu button I like to push this arrow key back one time. It'll take you to channels. And then I just go down to auto scan and then hit OK. It will ask, are you sure? And then click over to yes and then scan for channels. You would do the same concept if you're trying to scan for cable. Basically, you would just go up to the air cable. Try to slide that out of the way. And would you would just change it to cable and then auto scan. And then down here is where your switch is for your converter. So um, you're able to, <clears throat> if you're boondock camping, you're able to convert some of the outlets to a actual, turns a 12 volt to a 110 source and some of the outlets can be controlled by this. You do have storage up above as well. And then this guy here is gonna be our shower. Gonna hand back the camera. Uh, so this here is what they have a shower miser style setup. So it's designed so when you are boondock camping, we're not trying to waste all our fresh water in our tank. So basically what you would do is you would flip this knob down, then turn on your hot water. Your water is going to start flowing through here and going back into the fresh tank. Okay, this will actually change a, a lighter shade of blue once it gets hot. And then from there, you would just turn it there to the sprayer head setting. All right, and then next we're going to have our thermostat here. Basically, uh, it's a lot of button pushing with this model. You push your little space bar looking guy and it'll light up. Then from there, you're going to have fan low and fan high. Give that a second. That should kick on. And after that, you're going to have cool high and cool low. In these two settings here, the air conditioner just continuously runs. It will not shut off. And then after that, you'll have cool low and cool high auto in that setting that's where it would shut on and off to your desired set temperature and then your last option is going to be heat that is gas only and then inside this door here is going to be where our bathroom is located you have your vent fan here basically you would open that guy turn it on you do have a light switch here on the side for the bathroom you're gonna have your solar panel controller here. So basically what this guy does is it monitors the batteries and once it, the batteries go below a certain level, as long as the solar panels are collecting sun, it will automatically allow that panel to come through and charge the batteries for you. Down at the bottom is where our control panel is located. So it'll tell you the status of the battery. Our fresh tank, as you see, we still got some water in there. And then our black is empty and our gray is empty. Then you got your water heater that's going to be for the gas only side. Once again, the electric is on the uh, outside. And then your water pump. You're only using the water pump if you're using the fresh water tank. If you're hooked to city water, you do not need to use this guy. And then right here is going to be um, heated holding tanks. So basically, they got little 12 volt heating pads on the bottom. They got built in thermostats. So once those tanks go below a certain temperature, they would automatically come on and start heating those tanks on up. But these do have to be on for those to be working but it just monitors the tank so it wants that so if there's liquid in there and once that temperature has gotten below a certain 
temperature that they have built into that thermostat, they'll automatically kick on and then they shut off, I believe, around when they get somewhere in the 60s. All right, so from there, we have basically made our way around your coach. Uh, hopefully, this uh, was knowledgeable and informational for you. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us, and we will do our best to answer those questions for you over the phone. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.